Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, Dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, our Savior comes to reconcile us with the Father and with one another. May the work of reconciliation by Jesus bear fruit in our lives through our repentance. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this Holy Mass, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, you, my brothers and sisters, that, that I have greatly sinned in, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let
let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son. But may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please all be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On that day, a shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse, and from his roots a bud shall blossom. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and of understanding, a spirit of counsel and of strength, a spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord, and his delight shall be the fear of the Lord. Not by his appearance shall he judge, nor by hearsay shall he decide, but he shall judge the poor with justice and decide aright for the lands afflicted. He shall strike the ruthless with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Justice shall be the band around his waist, and faithfulness a belt upon his hips. Then the wolf shall be a guest of the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the young lion shall browse together, with a little child to guide them. The cow and the burr shall be neighbors, together their young shall rest. The lion shall eat hay like the ox. The baby shall play by the cobra's den, and the child lay his hand on the other's lair. There shall be no harm or ruin on all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be filled with knowledge of the Lord as waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse set up as a signal for the nations. The Gentiles shall seek out, for his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Justice shall flower in his days, 
and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. May his name be blessed forever, as long as the sun his name shall remain. In him shall all the tribes of the earth be blessed. All the nations shall proclaim his happiness. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, whatever was written previously was written for our instruction, that by endurance and by the encouragement of the Scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to think in harmony with one another, in keeping with Christ Jesus, that with one accord you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, then, as Christ welcomed you for the glory of God. For I say that Christ became a minister of the circumcised to show God's truthfulness, to confirm the promises to the patriarchs, but so that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, Therefore, I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all stand. Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths, all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. John the Baptist appeared, preaching in the desert of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was of him that the prophet Isaiah had spoken when he said, A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, 
make straight his paths. John wore clothing made of camel's hair and had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. At that time, Jerusalem, all Judea, and the whole region around the Jordan were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. When he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce good fruit as evidence of your repentance. And do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God can raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Even now, the axe lies at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I am baptizing you with water for repentance, but the one who is coming after me is mightier than I. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand. He will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please all be seated. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. Una po ay nais ko pong i-welcome kayong lahat na nandito ngayong umaga na ito, lalo na po ang mga galing pa sa iba't ibang lugar, ang ating mga pilgrims, lalo na po ngayong araw ay magsasagawa mamayang hapon ng Grand Marian Procession. Dalawang taon niyo pong hinintay ito. At alam ko ngayong umaga pa lang o kagabi pa lang o ilang buwan na na kayo'y excited at masayang masaya na tayo'y nagkatipon muli upang ipahayag ang ating debosyon sa ating mahal na ina. We want to tell you that this cathedral is your home. As we always say in the Manila Cathedral, Welcome home. This is the mother church of the country. This is not just the Cathedral of Manila. This is not just the Cathedral of us here in the Archdiocese. This is the first Cathedral of the country. For more than 300 years, this is the Metropolitan Cathedral of the whole Philippines. So, do not feel that you are strangers here. Wag niyo pong isipin na hindi kayo taga dito. Taga Cavite kami, taga Cebu kami, taga Visayas o Mindanao kami, taga Norte kami. Pagdating sa Manila Cathedral, lahat tayo ay nasa tahanan ang tahanan ng mahal nating ina. Iisa lang naman si Maria. Bagamat iba-iba ang titulo, pero iisa lang ang ating minamahal na ina. Kaya, feel at home. Huwag ho kayong matutulog. No? Baka makatulog kayo sa sobrang at home. No? So, welcome home and feel at home here. This is also your mother church. This is also your cathedral, if I may say. This is the Mother Church, and we welcome you home again happily this Sunday. 
and to make our coming home more meaningful and fruitful. We do not only make a procession, but the important part of this Sunday is celebrating the Eucharist together. And today is the second Sunday of our preparations this Advent season. The readings from the Holy Scriptures this Sunday will make our celebrations today meaningful. The theme of the readings today is reconciliation. Pagkakasundo. Yan ang mensahe. Yan ang gawain ni Jesus nang siya ay dumating sa mundong ito. Ang pagkasunduin tayo. Kaya po sa mga aatend ng Grand Marian Procession, magkakasundo ho kayo. Hindi ko kayo magkakalaban. Sino ang pinakamagandang karosa? Sino ang koronada? Sino ang hindi koronada? At wala sa listahan ngayon. No? Baka ganyan ang isip ng iba. Jesus came to reconcile us with one another. And this is the beautiful message of the first reading today from the book of the prophet Isaiah, that when the stump of Jesse will blossom, when the Messiah will come, he will bring with him his mission of reconciliation. The wolf will be a guest of the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the young lion shall browse together with the little child to guide them. The cow and the bear will be neighbors, and the lion shall eat hay like the ox. Yung magkakalaban dati, kapag dumating na ang Mesiyas na tagapagligtas, ay magkakasundo. That is the mission of the Messiah, to bring reconciliation with one another. But the Gospel today reminds us of the important part of reconciliation, and that is repentance. Reconciliation without repentance is empty. Ang pagkakasundo na hindi marunong magsisi sa maling ginawa ay walang kabuluhan. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin, pwede ba bati na tayo? Pero hindi mo man naman pinagsisisihan ang maling ginawa mo, walang kabuluhan yan. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin, pwede ba patawarin mo na ako sa inutang ko, pero wala ka namang planong bayaran ang utang mo, walang kabuluhan ang pagsosori mo. An important part of reconciliation is, Repentance. That is why in the message of John the Baptist to prepare the way to the Messiah, John the Baptist tells the people, repent. That is the way to reconciliation, repentance. That is why when John the Baptist saw the Pharisees and the Sadducees, he told them that, are you just fleeing the coming wrath? You need to show in your life repentance before there will be reconciliation. 
if you want reconciliation without repentance, then like the Pharisees and the Sadducees, maybe you are just escaping the wrath. You are just escaping justice. Kaya mag-ingat ho kayo sa mga taong magsabi na forgive and forget. Mag-ingat kayo sa mga yan na nagsasabi sa inyo, Uy, ang tagal-tagal naman na ng kasalanan ko sa'yo. Kalimutan mo na yan. Tagal-tagal na niyang kasalanan na yan. Kalimutan nyo na lang yan. Para yung mga pariseyo at saduseyo, gusto lang nilang takasan ang responsibilidad nila. Mag-ingat kayo sa mga nagsasabi niyan sa'yo. Baka sabihin sa'yo, kalimutan mo na yung ginawa ko ang tagal naman na nun. E teka, nagsisi ka na ba sa ginawa mo? Binalik mo na ba yung kinuha mo sa akin? Inayos mo na ba yung sira na ginawa mo? If there is no repentance, reconciliation is empty. Those who are seeking reconciliation without repentance, they just want to escape justice. They just want to escape their responsibility and accountability. My dear brothers and sisters, this season of Advent, Jesus comes to give us reconciliation. But He also reminds us, reconciliation will be empty if there will be no repentance and justice. That is why in our second reading today, from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, St. Paul instructs the Christians of Rome in order for us to have harmony with one another First, let us listen to the instruction of the scriptures that was written for us. Bago pa man tayo magkaroon ng pagkakaisa, makinig muna sa sinasabi ng salita ng Diyos. Ang pagkakaisa na hindi nakabatay sa salita ng Diyos ay walang Kabuluhan. Harmony should be rooted in the Word of God, in repentance and justice. My dear brothers and sisters, I know that uh, we are already preparing for the season of Christmas. Many of us are doing our lists for Christmas. Can I suggest to all of you something to include in your list? Siguro po nakalista na ano ang gusto niyong regalo ngayong Pasko. Nakalista na siguro ano ang kakainin sa Pasko. Nakalista na siguro ano ang ibibigay mong regalo sa iyong binamakal. Pwede ko ba ilista niyo rin? Ano yung dapat kong pagsisihan sa taong ito? Ano kaya ang dapat kong ihingi ng tawad bago matapos man ang taong ito? Ano ang dapat kong ayusin? Ano ang dapat kong isauli? Baka may hiniram ka na nakatago pa sa kwarto mo, isauli mo na. Ano ang utang na hindi ko pa nababayaran? Bayaran mo na. Sapagkat kapag makikipagkasundo ka, bago pa man matapos ang taon nito, kailangan mo nang pagsisihan ang ating nagawang mga pagkakamali at kasalanan. My dear brothers and sisters, as we continue this celebration, this second Sunday of our Advent preparations, let us thank Jesus for His ministry of reconciliation. But let us also be reminded 
that reconciliation without repentance is empty. Let us make the Advent season meaningful by asking for forgiveness and repairing the wrong that we have done. Amen. Please all stand. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. John the Baptist called people to repentance. He prepared a way for the Lord. We make these petitions as we prepare to welcome Christ, our Savior. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer that the leaders of the Church may continue to call people to turn away from sinful ways. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That men and women entrusted with authority will make justice flourish in our time. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That sinners may hear and take to heart the call to repent and to accept the mercy offered by God only Son. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. That all those in our community who endure suffering, rejection, or loneliness may find the fullness of peace in the coming of our Savior. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our, our prayer. That the faithful departed may see the salvation of God in his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In silence, let us now pray for our personal intentions and for all the intentions offered in this Mass. God, our Father, when your only Son was to come into this world, we were given hope of salvation. With that same hope, we trust you will grant our petitions. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please all be seated.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept a sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for He assumed at His first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when He comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please all stand. The Mystery of Faith. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very spirit who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am, am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen.
Please all stand. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us all kneel as we pray the prayer of entrustment to the Immaculate Conception. O most blessed Virgin Mary, you who were preserved from the stain of original sin, most loving and powerful patron of the Philippines, to you also be endless praise, everlasting veneration, and thanksgiving in Christ Jesus. O Immaculate Mother, our most kind Mother, our most sweet and most exalted Queen, with grateful hearts, we praise your mercies and fly to your protection. O Blessed Lady, you who captivate with your sweetness the hearts of men, you who have captivated our hearts, you have captivated the hearts of our people also. You have established, fostered, and strengthened the foundations of the faith in our beloved land by your good patronage as manifested in so many visible proofs of your maternal love. We are yours. We wish to be yours. Show yourself a mother and patron to us. Guard us and protect us through your most powerful intercession. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Please be seated for a few announcements. As we come nearer to the celebration of the great solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, our schedule of Masses here at the Manila Cathedral will be at 8 a.m., 11 a.m., 4 p.m., and 6 p.m. This will be on December 8, the feast day of the Immaculate Conception. The 11 a.m. Mass will be our Fiesta Mass to be presided by our beloved Archbishop Jose Cardinal Advincula and to be concelebrated also with our Apostolic Nuncio, Archbishop Charles Brown. We invite everyone to come to church on that day. This will be a day of obligation for all Catholics. Inaanyayahan po namin na kayo po ay magsimba na ng pisikal sa ating mga simbahan, lalo na kung kaya na po natin at tayo po ay uh, malusog na no, para humarap dito sa ating simbahan. Ang oras po ng mga misa dito sa Manila Cathedral ay alas 8 ng umaga at alas 11, alas 4 naman ng hapon at alas 6 ng gabi. At uh, sa darating din po na December 8, uh, we will be bringing back our practice, our tradition during the feast day of Our Lady on December 8, we allow the people to come up the sanctuary here so that you could offer your prayers and devotions to Our Lady and come nearer to her image here at the sanctuary of the Immaculate Conception. Dalawang taon po nating hindi nagawa ito. Sa darating po na December 8, ay papayagan na po namin muli on December 8 sa araw ng kanyang kapistahan na makalapit po kayo, makaakyat po kayo dito sa altar at makalapit tayo sa imahe ng mahal na ina 
upang mag-alay tayo ng ating pagdedebosyon at ang ating mga panalangin at intensyon sa Kanya. May we have a fruitful celebration of the solemnity of the principal patroness of the Philippines and patroness of the Manila Cathedral, the Immaculate Conception. Let us all stand and receive the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of His only begotten Son and yearn for His coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with His blessing now and forever. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, May He make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity, now and forever. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when He comes again in majesty forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.